Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience presented by DraftKings. It is that time of year again. Well, it's twice a year at this point, really. The Challenge! Spies, Lies, and Allies, Season 37? I think this is going to be this time around. We're going to have a cast preview. The entire fantasy pricing, our picks, and the rules of the game. If you want to play in the Pat Mayo Experience free, spoiler-free as well. If you got spoilers, you can fuck off, okay? We don't want to hear it. I want to enjoy the Challenge. Because I don't want it spoiled for me. I enjoy this. Like, the one thing I have in my life that I can sit back, I can turn my brain off, and I can enjoy and watch my fantasy scoring go up. The link to play is in the description. Feel free to pass that around to whoever you want. Let's fill up the Pat Mayo Experience Listener's League Challenge Fantasy Contest this season. Obviously, there are no prizes because it doesn't cost anything to play. Maybe I can try to figure something out if you come in first place, but... It's just the way it's going to be. The man who created all of this stuff, oh, I should probably say as well, smash the like button to the video in the comment section. Again, spoiler free. Give me your favorite sleeper play from the challenge of the brand new cast, because there's a lot of rookies on this season. Who's your favorite rookie that you want to draft in fantasy this season? Also subscribe to Mayo Media Network while you're here as well. Rob McIntyre, the man who designed the game, came up with the pricing, and host of The Challenge Chronicles, podcast is on the line you're like a big giant head in the video version what's going on <laughs> i thought we fixed that it's been, it's been a while since i've been on your program um i think it's been like it's pretty much been since the beginning of all stars right i think so i mean i haven't been doing challenge recaps i've been leaving that to you and devin and trace and i've been quite enjoying the challenge chronicles you can sign up for their patreon as well where there's even more if you like the challenge it's, it's gonna be for you which I do, so I subscribe to the Patreon so I can listen to this stuff. Like, while I'm at the gym, I just, with football season coming up, it's going to be really tough for me to squeeze in recaps here. Yeah, I mean, moving, football season, releasing all these new products, I assume the challenge is unfortunately on the back burner for you. Not not so much the case for me. Uh, it's not in the back burner of my life because my wife and I sit down and every Wednesday night and we thoroughly enjoy it. We, we try to start at like 20 minutes late so we can zoom through the commercials, but either way, it, it's, one of the, it's one of the few programs that we actually do watch together and both enjoy. So the way it's set up right now, the season premiere, episode one, is going to be August 11th. You have until the show starts to pick your team. There's actually actually going to be another challenge show like an opening show on the monday august 9th that will not count towards scoring but it might give you some insight to what's going on on this season so i would recommend i mean you can fill out a dummy team right now watch that episode come back fill out your team and you should probably be good to go uh rob same rules as before you get to pick six players on your fantasy team you pick your team once for the season i know it says episode why do they have episode one why can't you change that just say here's your season team uh, oh, you're when it says set episode lineup? Yeah. Well, I, I've contacted our engineering team about that. Unfortunately, it's uh, very low on the list of priorities. So I, I've, I've actually talked to them about that. Yeah, but we, we can't get that fixed for the time being, unfortunately. You, you all have to deal. I have to f accept these questions every single season. Like, do I pick my lineup for every episode? It's like, no, you pick your team once for the season. You get six picks. You have a $1,000 salary cap. So it's set up a lot like DraftKings in the way that we approach this. Uh, Rob has done the pricing. And whoever you pick as your team captain will, Rob, score how many bonus points? It's 10% uh, bonus points. So if they had scored 100 points in an episode, they would score 110 for you if, you had it, if they were your team captain. All right, and the players that you want to target are likely the players that go deeper into the game, but it's not just winning challenges or winning the season that's going to score you points. Is your person going to, like, take a shit on the side of the road? That's a lot of points. How about hooking up? <laughs> that's a ton. Making out. Strategy. So the best parts of reality TV, Rob, are reflected in this game. Yeah, basically, there's we try to set it up where there's a pretty good correlation between screen time and how many points you're accruing. So if your person's on screen, driving storylines, winning missions, that, that's what you want. Which leads me to believe that there's one player on the male cast that's returning that is severely underpriced. Who I took last season, he was great as a fantasy scorer, despite being horrible at the challenge. Would that be Josh Martinez? That, I've gotten a few messages about him. That, that would be Josh Martinez. I have, I've come a 180 on Josh. He's now like my favorite guy on the show. Really? I don't, I go back and forth on him because I think he's clearly like not good at the show. And then I also think he's, you know, he, he can be somewhat of an annoying if he gets too much screen time. But I mean, he, he is good from a producer's perspective. And then if like there's nothing going on in the house, they can be like, all right, let's, let's have Devin set Josh off. 
And that'll give us like eight minutes of airtime to fill up this episode when we don't have anything else going on. I, I think when you have someone on the show who just lets their emotions control everything they do, it does save those really down episodes. So we had a few of those last year, and then it just resulted in like Josh yelling, and then Josh crying, and then Josh coming back. He's going to get his screen time in episodes where they have nothing else to fill, and that's going to lead to a lot of fantasy points, I think. Why him over Devin? I, I don't mind Devin either. It's just there's something about Josh where he is so hated amongst people. Like, it, it's an act for Josh, and he understands the role that he plays. Sometimes it feels like Devin's pressing a bit much to be, like, the funny bad guy, which I enjoy. Oh. But it, it seems to come a lot more natural to Josh. So I feel like on the challenge, there's, like, a very clear Hunter to West scale uh, in terms of how people are on the show, where Hunter's, like, the most genuine character. He's everything he's doing. It's just how he's feeling. Whereas Wes is much more produced, and a lot of stuff he's doing more just for the show. And I think it's fine to be on either side of that scale. Uh, but I think Devin is definitely leaning much more towards the West side of that scale, where a lot of what he's doing, he's more so playing it up for the show. Um, like, last season, he has that rivalry with Tori, where he, he's almost like reminding Tori to stay in character that they actually hate each other. And you can see on like Tori's Instagram, they have pictures of each other, pictures with each other all the time. They're clearly hanging out and fine with each other outside of the show. So I, I think he is a little bit more produced, which actually makes him not a bad fantasy pick because then, you know, okay, even if Devin doesn't actually dislike anybody on the show, he'll make up something where he'll get some airtime. Yeah, I, I, that's a, why I kind of enjoy Josh a little bit more at this point because like you said, they're, they're both produced. They're both being kind of told what to do, but it seems like, once Josh is told what to do, his, his like basic instinct takes over and then he just like, he's fully committed <laughs> to the role where you can even see like Devin's laughing it off. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I, I'm curious now what they'll do. Like, do you think they'll keep up the rivalry before the show? Cause they know it's good TV or do you think they'll actually like have some truce and it'll be a big brother Devin Alliance? I think that Devin will just, I mean, even in the trailer. So that's why I, I mean, there's going to be a spoiler because they spoiled it in the trailer for the season. But I would just imagine, Ashley even says, just like there's going to be a gigantic veterans alliance. I would just assume that they're all in it. So I just don't see how that's going to function for the beginning of this season. So because to give a clue into the format, we know the format is going to be uh, 17 pairs with each of the pairs having one American cast member and one international cast member. And the vast majority of American cast members are veterans. And then the vast majority of international cast members are rookies. So how are they going to have this veterans alliance if they're all on different teams? Well, I think what you're going to see, at least at the beginning, is not every veteran is going to be paired with a rookie. So there can be American rookies paired with international rookies, and they'll just work to get those people out as quickly as possible. Then everything's going to be up for grabs. So it'll be like the survivor people that are like the American rookies. Yeah, the American people are going to be the, sur the survivor people are going to be the American rookies. And if they get paired up with another rookie, so the only like way that they can kind of get out of it is if they had Kyle or Nam or Big T, I suppose, as a partner. If yeah. not, they're going to have a rookie partner and then you know, those teams are going to be gone. I suppose. But I mean, I think that'll still just work for the first little bit. And then maybe the pairs get shaken up enough where you, you can have that run through. Um, I can see like a late game veterans alliance takeover, but I think in the beginning, it, it could be one of those things where they'll talk about the veterans alliance all the time, but then we actually look at what happens. It doesn't have that much effect. So do you have any more insight into this format? So it's going to be pairs, but is it going to be like last year where you compete individually or eliminations going to be pairs? Are people going to be able to switch teams? Are they going to shake it up halfway through and be like, oh, it's individuals now or your team's a four now? Because it seems like this is where they want to start going every single season to throw mm -hmm. the cast for a loop to have a big, you know, when you do the mid season trailer, TJ says something they can cut to black. It's like, Oh my God, tune in next <laughs> week. Like I'm kind of sick of this sort of stuff. I'd rather just see a regular season for once. I, at this point, I would definitely just prefer to have pairs and have the pairs run through the whole season. I definitely think not having the skulls will be a massive benefit to this season. We really saw when last season lost some steam, was kind of when a lot of people had picked up skulls and we just knew who was going to go into elimination every episode. There was almost no point to doing the mission. So I, I think they have gotten rid of the skulls, which I think will be a huge benefit this season. Outside of that, it does look pretty similar to last season's format, where it's going to be pairs, at least to start, and the pairs are going to be switching around based on eliminations. Um, based on the trailer, though, it does appear like the like um, – It'll be male and female eliminations each week. Does that mean like the pairs are competing as pairs or individuals? I don't know. 
but it does seem like there'll be pair it'll be paired eliminations each week with no skulls and pair switching around um and then they could always cut it off like two-thirds of the way through and go individual too so we don't know about that but it will be a pairs um to start so this is has no chance of being better than the all-star season right I think they're just so different at this. They're point. not that like, different. They seem it's like just different it's shows. The same, it's the same fucking thing. It's just All Stars is way better. But like when All Stars, like All Stars is formatted like the old seasons, where there's not like they're not really focusing on season long storylines as much. It's much more episodic, where they'll have kind of one storyline that carries each episode. They're also focusing on different things. There's very little tactics that are being shown in the All Star Show. I mean, there doesn't seem like they needed to have need to have that many for the All Star Show. The eliminations aren't presented as like physical battles as much on the All Star Show. There's a lot of differences to me between the All Stars and the regular show. I mean, it's the same show. It has essentially the same types of format. It's just there's a consistency to the ones on All Stars. And when I just look at this cast, it's like the same cast as last year, but without Wes. Yeah, it is weird how they did that. So it's like no Cam, no Leroy, no West. They just took like half the cast from last season, threw on Amanda for another veteran. She was the only veteran that was not on last season. And then brought in a bunch of internationals, which I, I don't mind. I think the overall format will actually be pretty good. If you look at mo- most of the seasons that have had the format, that's half uh, half new people, half returning people. We have Fresh Meat 1, Fresh Meat 2, Bloodlines, and War of the Worlds 1. And I and, think we can say three out of four of those were pretty successful. Yeah, I would say that three of those four seasons are three of the better seasons of the challenge. Bloodlines has probably the greatest moment in the history of the challenge, at least the one that <laughs> I rewatched the most with Jenna and her cousin. But the overall season wasn't great. the overall season wasn't great. But Fresh Meat 1 and Fresh Meat 2 are awesome. And War of the Worlds 1 is what, your favorite season? I, I was thinking about it. I probably would have that number one. And I even think with like with that season and with some of the recent seasons, I do think the international cast members have been a bright point. Like I, I would I would I think having this many on will be interesting just to see how the different dynamics with, that they bring to the show. I, I agree because it gives you different strategy points, it gives you different personalities. And how many rookies are on the season? Like twenty? Uh, I think that's a good ballpark. So w- one thing we should also say off the top is um I have two alternates listed in the pricing for this season. You can kind of, you can, they're very clearly able to be seen in the trailer, how, how they're going to function exactly on the season. We don't know. We don't know when they come in, if they come in, you know, is it just a mercenaries or what's going on with them? Uh, but they're in their pricing. They can be clearly seen. So if you count them, I do believe it is 20 uh, rookies. So there's more rookies than veterans by a decent amount. Yeah. And all you really need to do, and one of the, the main reasons that War of the Worlds 1 and the Fresh Meat seasons ended up being so good and having a lasting impact was when you had these rookies come in, you, know, you have a giant cast of them. And you only really need three or four of them to be really good. And then all of a sudden you have a really good season. Because if you were just going to run it back with the same people every time you kind of know who they are at least now there's a surprise all to like oh i really like this person or oh man i can't believe this person is so good and you have that unknown element with a brand new cast like half of them or the majority of them are probably just going to be in absolute duds but if you can find that <laughs> those three or four like two men two women and then they're on the show for an extended period of time like think about how good a, how good of a find like kyle was coming out of like the british side and i'm kind of disappointed there aren't more brits as a part of this because brits are just better at reality tv Oh, we haven't seen how Dutch people fell on reality TV. Maybe maybe they'll be great too. Yeah, apparently. I mean, there's a lot of is there how many people from Nigeria are there this year? Uh, there's two. Um, and they both have pretty big followings. So the, they'll they'll be pretty significant. I would hope so, being like if you're handpicked from Nigeria to be on American television, I would have to think that you have gigantic followings in one of the most populated countries in the world. Yeah, like th- the big one is this um girl Tasha. Uh, Natasha, uh, she is priced at 190 for this season. And then she, she has 1.8 million Instagram followers. And by comparison, somebody like Turbo has around like 900,000. So she's coming in with about double what he has. And like on every single social media post you see from the challenge, you'll see who are called the Tasha Titans, who are like her ravenous fan base who posts on everything. And I think we have seen on the show that when somebody comes on with that level of following, you can tell once they get on, okay, there's a reason they have that level of following. They have a camera presence that's a little bit different um, than the other people. Yeah, like they're, they are the like A plus level reality stars from where, wherever they're from. And now they're being thrown into this giant pool. 
and it's going to be a big thing too because I've heard that Paramount Plus is expanding into like 150 countries, and this is. I would guess the genesis behind having people from all of these different countries where now they can actually sell their product to the countries where these people are from. Uh, and all of a sudden, like that's going to be their new ticket to try to get new subscriptions. Yeah, I would assume. Yeah. Is uh, Canada included? in those 150 countries. I didn't actually see whether I, we have Paramount plus here, but I think, oh, okay. I, I think that, it's not going to be the case for that because the MTV rights are owned by different stations up here. Like MTV Canada owns MTV and I believe that's a bell product. So they've, as long as they have a contract with Buna Murray to air broadcast the challenge and in like different Buna Murray shows in Canada, they can kind of do what they want with it. I don't know if the back catalog is protected that way though, because that appears on a different streaming service, but it only goes back to like season 19, which I think is fresh meat, which is not a bad place to start if you're going to go do it. But if everything was just on Paramount plus, like I would buy Paramount plus, but it's not on there right now in Canada, but I still have the different ways to watch it. Okay. So I guess it ends up working out then. Um, it is funny that they all go back to freshman too. I'm curious as to why, like what the start and stops are for them with that. I'm not sure to tell you that it's probably like a rights thing and maybe Paramount, like the, the hardest thing was like, we couldn't watch all stars up here. I had to find a different route in order to watch the all stars episodes. So shout out trace for that one for helping me find the all stars season. And it was the season I've enjoyed the most in probably 10 years. So that was a really good watch for me, but I'm hoping that all stars where it doesn't have the deal up in Canada, that that goes on Paramount plus because th that's all it takes to buy a streaming service at that point. And I think this is really the clever thing that they're doing by casting these people from Romania and Nigeria and just countries you wouldn't traditionally associate with. Even when you did like war of the worlds, like you would just go and be like, Oh, let's take people from England. That's going to work out really <laughs> well for us. Uh, just because they have that sort of base. There's MTV UK, and they can cross-pollinate. They're on similar types of shows. But now that this is going to be, like, actually worldwide and wide-ranging, it only takes, like, one episode of a show to sell you on something that's, like, $5 a month. Like I said, if I could get Challenge All-Stars on Paramount+, Plus, I would pay the $5 a month or whatever the hell it is just to make sure that I have that when that comes out. That's probably what I'm guessing that the financial idea behind this is in countries like Nigeria and Romania and the Netherlands, places like that. Yeah, I would assume so, too. I do also think there's credence to it as just a show product, though. Like, I think this is a pretty easy hook of like, oh, look at all these American reality stars compete against the international stars. You get kind of a global dynamic. And I think it's just interesting that I don't see many other shows going this route. So I think it does give them a unique lane. I don't, but I think if this was just going to be broadcast in America, bringing in a few of these players would probably be the move, but you would probably want to recycle the more well-known names or try to pump up your previously existing products, like go after more continue to go after Big Brother people, go after Survivor people. Is the real world still a thing? Didn't that come back? Oh, it, it, it like barely came back. It was like on Facebook Watch, and I don't even know what the ratings were for that. Nobody from there has come on the show. Then they had the real world homecoming um, about the first season. So you That's could pretty have, much how rude. So you could have Eric Nice come back. Like maybe you could have a few of the veterans <laughs> from All Stars if they had the time to go do this, like allocate a spot or two. Like that's how I assume it would work out if they weren't broadcasting in all these different countries. Yeah, I think they do really want to keep All Stars and the main show a separate. Main show. But I don't, I don't know how many of them would really be interested in coming on the main show. I think they kind of want to keep those as separate avenues. All right, well, let's get to the top price players in the fantasy game. Once again, you pick six, you allocate one as your team captain. They score 10% bonus points in each episode when they do that scoring. CT, the highest price player is $280 of your $1,000 budget. So it's going to take a lot to get him. Smashly, $240. It seems really expensive for Smashly. Fessy, $230. Casey, $230. Corey, $200. Nelson, $200. Tori. 200. I want to start with Tori for a second because I'm surprised you've continued to put her up this high in terms of the pricing. You think this is a Tori rebound season? Has everyone given up on Tori at this point of actually coming through? Like her best season was her rookie season. She's been kind of a disaster after that. So I, I would, I think she'll have a pretty good shot this time around. I, I think I'm pretty good on Tori's chances for this season. 
more overall, I mean, it was like War of the Worlds 2, which was only a couple of seasons ago, that she was supposedly the best person on the show. And then she has her best season after that. No, every, everybody thinks she's the worst person on the show. So I think the real answer there is something in between. But also, if you look at the rest of these veteran, the veteran female cast, who do you think like should be in that spot then? I don't know. I just it seems like we we had one year where the female cast was super strong. I think that was total madness where it was super strong. And then we look at this year, it's like, eh, it, it's kind of like it's Casey, and then I, I guess it is Tori. And then it's like a bunch of mid level players. Like I think on the female side for my fantasy picks, I probably ended up probably going to shade rookies on this one, or maybe some okay. of the cheaper type veterans. Because like you know, when you look at it, like. I, I guess the spoiler is we saw Amber B come in last year's champ come in during the trailer. So she's going to be a part of the show mm -hmm. somehow. We have no idea what role she's going to play. Like I'm not going to spend $180 on her for my fantasy team. If she's a mercenary and she gets one episode worth of stuff. So like, <laughs> I, I don't want to invest that, but like even her, like she's kind of that next level up, but you're dealing like with a lot of nannies, Amanda's, you know, just just the run of the mill Anissa, like Anissa's 140 bucks. Like Anissa should be like negative 140 bucks. If you take her on your team. I mean, she gets points. She hangs. She finds a way to hang around. It's not like Anissa is usually the first boot. Anissa kind of it just she, she'll be there for eighty percent of the season. She'll get a lot of confessionals because she's decent at them, and then that, that's what she'll do. She looks like she gets banged up a bit in the trailer. Yeah, she does. And ho hopefully, things are okay with her with that. But well, it does look like she suffers a pretty bad injury. Well, what is injury leaving the show points? How many points is that? It's 150, so it, it won't make your season, but it'll make up a little bit if you get somebody hurt. Well, I mean, if she, if she pulls her, like, classic thing where she lasts a really long time, she lasts, like, mid-season or 75% of the way through, then gets hurt, then it's going to be a lot of points. <laughs> yeah, then she'll be a lock. Uh, yeah, I, I, th I think Tori will be actually be in a really good spot here. She might honestly be my pick to win of the woman. Um, I do, I'm a pretty big believer in the reversal theory on the show. Where after somebody's had a season or two where they've really been in the spotlight, they'll get knocked back down. And then the inverse of that, where season or two out of the spotlight will allow them to spring back up. And I think just from a pure athlete perspective, I do think she is a really talented athlete. I think sometimes there's just like a pattern recognition with her that she doesn't quite have yet. So if she can improve in that realm, I think she'll be in a really good spot. I think that her success here really depends on who her partner is. Like, Devin was weirdly a good partner for her, I think. It's just he wasn't yeah. able to physically keep up with all the top guys on the show. And is Tori the biggest of the girls, like, size-wise? Like, she's pretty tall and, like, she's pretty strong. And I don't think she gets recognition that way. I think people just look at it and be like, oh, Casey's big and strong. And she's the strongest. Or when Jenny was on, Jenny is big <laughs> and strong. But, like, Tori feels like she's the same size as them. I mean, Tori beat Jenny in a hall brawl. And then you have, like, Michaela Bradshaw, one of the survivors, which well, she's pretty tall, so she might be a somewhat similar size. But in terms of just pure strength, I think Tori might be the strongest girl on the cast. Yeah, it's just, So I, I think she'll be in a really good spot here. Maybe so. I, I, maybe, maybe you're selling me on Tori a little bit. I was just, I guess 200 isn't that expensive. It's the same price as, like, Nelson and Corey. But is there any way that yeah. you can't take CT at his price? It feels like you have to take him now. It's funny. Um... I put him at 280, which is $40 more expensive than anybody else. And then the trailers come out and he looks like he's even twice in, he's like in twice as much better shape as he was last season. And like, should I have had him on like the Mark Long $310 range? That, that's kind of what we might be looking for CT here. Yeah. Like it, I, it, I, it, I, it, weir it weirdly feels like 280 is too low for CT coming off a win. And it doesn't feel like at the beginning of last season, despite the fact that he won, he was the target of every smart player in the game. Like, we can't let this guy get to a final. We can't let this guy get to a final. And then they just kind of forgot about it for half the season. And then he gets to the final. And obviously he ends up winning. A lot of that had to do with Amber, though, because Amber was really good in that final. But CT is just steady Eddie. He's going to be tough to beat in an elimination. And if he finds an elimination that he likes, he's going to go in and win it. And if he goes to the final, who's better at finals amongst the guys? I mean, he is like 40. So what? I'm almost 40. I dust you in a final, Rob. I mean, I'm, I'm running a lot these days. I don't uh, know. I'm what sure are we doing are. in this final? Is this like name, name this Matlock episode? Where's your age coming in as a factor? Well, I, I don't know. I feel like you'd be better off with the Matlock stuff than I would be. No, we're just going for like a physical <laughs> endurance competition. I'd beat you with smoking cigarettes the entire time. I, I think I could hold my own in a final. Maybe we'll have to set this up at some point. But, Maybe. Uh, You're like half my age. You should, by your theory, you should be able to beat me. Yeah, I think I think I could handle myself in a final. Depending on 
Like, are we doing like the World of Worlds one final? Sure, we can. You pick any final you want. All right. You don't want to. You, do, you don't. You don't want to pick the Gauntlet two final because that will out eat the shit out of you. No, that probably wouldn't be great for me. I, I think. I think I could hold my own in a final. I'd have to. I mean, I've been running a lot. Like the, there's the gyms were closed down here for forever, so I, all I could do was run. All right. You don't sound too confident anymore. I'm telling you, almost 40 year old. I'm, st- I'm still pretty confident. I, I just don't. I mean, look, I've never seen you compete in a final before. So maybe you're secret Jordan. And then I don't know about it. See, there we are. I, I think I could be OK. I, I'm not quite in the shape that Jordan has been. I actually had torn my calves, so I'm not in the best shape right now. I'm getting back to that, though, because I've started to do more spinning over like sprinting at this point because it keeps re-aggravating my calf so once i get back to running you're you're toast you're absolute toast in this regard CT, i mean but ct is probably in the best shape of his adult life now not like peak ct type stuff but he's also i mean he's he still smokes cigs right we, we always catch him smoking cigs you would th- i would think he's trimmed it down a little bit uh, but i do think he still smokes cigarettes uh i mean he's pretty he legit looks like he's been in the best shape since like rivals too like he he looks he looked great in all the intros and maybe like in the season without the skulls there's team people are going to be more willing like let, let's let's get him out of here we don't want CT to be able to hang around see I I think that vitriol is going to be for Fessy I think that the entire house is going to make a plan to try to get rid of Fessy yeah I I think the CBS group could be in a bit of trouble in this season we've seen these past two seasons really even before that. They've been able to kind of run things. They've been able to come on even as rookies and be in pretty good positions. But see, Fessy had so much negative attention last season. Um, Josh and Casey to a somewhat lesser degree. So I, I, I think he's going to be being put in early and put in consistently. Like I think if there is a veterans group, they're the, they're the few people who are left out of it. Yeah, I mean, I think Casey's going to be fine because, I mean, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not because it's been all over my social media, but she is basically like dating Nani at this point. You can see them making out in the trailer. Okay, so I think that those two are going to be aligned. I think that that gets Casey in with sort of like the old school challenge, CT, Devins, Nelson, Corey, like that. Plus, you have Nelson and Corey who are probably still pretty pissed off at Fessy. He just seems like the logical guy to continue to throw in because, A, he'll get rid of all of the rookies, and that's really not that big of a deal for them. He just, hey, Fessy, go and knock all these guys out. And then maybe someone catches him like Devin Cop Bananas and that like light bright elimination. Yeah, because like there are these eliminations aren't all like physical battles. Like if he was in the elimination that like um, uh, Leroy beat Jay in last season, like I think he could lose that to a couple people. And there, there's always a few things that he could go down in. And I just don't see where his allies are really coming from. Like he's got Josh and he'll have Casey, but I don't think Amber B is going to want to work with him again after last season. Maybe these survivor people come in and are willing to work with him from the CBS connection. But most of the veterans don't have a great dynamic with him. Like. I mean, maybe Tory, maybe Fessy jumps back on the Tory train, but I don't think he has that many, a big locked in group like he did last time. No, he, he strikes me as the fade from the very top end. And I just, yeah. I, I get Ashley's price because she's won twice, but is that like factored into her price that if she isn't the first woman out that she's going to win? Well, so with this pricing, what I'm setting it, the number one thing I'm really looking to do is just curb ownership. So whoever's going to be owned more, so I'm going to try to price up higher. But then also with Ashley, like she has an amazing per episode scoring rate. Like for the four, she's like almost like Le'Veon Bell. But for those few seasons where he'd be suspended for half the season and injured for a couple more games. But the games he shows up for, like they're putting up rates almost nobody else is. And then if she is able to hang around, like if Ashley does make it to the final, what odds would you give her of being the highest scoring player? 40%. Forty percent. I, I think I might even have it higher than that. She, but I think she, she's not. Her episode, she, she's, she's, not she's, she's not hooking up like she used to. So I mean, we see if she is able to get to a final. She has a very good chance to win. I think if all of this cast runs to final, unless if one of these rookies really surprises us, I think I'd give her the best shots of winning that just flat out. And then we know she, if she's on an episode, she's getting confessional. She's getting in fight. She's going to be politicking, politicking also. Like I think she just contributes in almost all areas of the show. And she's a big enough name where I think she's worthy of being priceless. Like if her and Casey are able to hang around for somewhat equitable amount of episodes, I'd be very surprised if Ashley doesn't outscore Casey by a significant amount. See, I don't know about that. Casey's not going to get the confessionals, but if she's already hooking up with Nani in the trailer, that's probably something that's going to be going on all season long. Like that, that that's almost like a, a stack if you take Casey and Nani together, isn't it? I mean, yeah, but like if they're a couple and they're just like a regular couple, 
Like they might show them hooking up once, but then it's not going to be that much of a story. Like it might not be that much of a storyline from there. Like, you know, like Polly and Kara had those seasons like a War of the Worlds one where they had like one scene of them like hooking up. And then after that, it was kind of just like, well, they're just a couple. They're just there. I don't know. I think we'll get some more screen time with it. How much is Nani? Nani is 150? Like that's not a huge, I'm trying to figure out how to build this because I do want to take CT because I think that he's just going to win. <laughs> or like, do I pass on CT and take this like Corey Nelson, Tory tier of player or maybe even take Casey, Corey and Nelson. I feel like Corey and Nelson, they've, ling- they've lurked for the past few seasons. Like Corey a- seems to actively be getting better at the challenge for once. I mean, he's made the past two finals, gotten second. Well, he got third on total madness, even though he was much better than Kyle throughout that dumb final. But he, he's been – he seems like he has a lot more awareness of what's just going on and, like, the intricate parts of the show. And he's – he I think he's kind of reduced his, as a character a little bit. But it, he'll be – while he's on, he'll be around enough to get some points. Um, that, that actually is, I think, my hot take for the season. I, I think this is the season of Nelson. I, I think Nelson is winning. Well, Nelson is your favorite person on the show. I feel like you say that he every is season is the, the – every season is the season of Nelson. I mean, I thought last season was the season of Wes and Cam and was proven incorrect. So, but I, I think Nelson is in a fantastic position this season. I think he'll have a lot of goodwill built up from the past couple of seasons where he's con- he's gone out in a tragic fashion. He's kind of in between the two groups this season. Like, I don't think CT dislikes him at all, but he has relationships with like Amanda and Devin. He's so also someone who seems to be able, like when rookies come on, usually he's able to build a decent rapport with them and get along. And while he's on, he's going to be getting into all sorts of scraps, racking up points that way. And we have seen to be very good in a final before uh, on Invasion. So I, I think this is his shot. It is his shot. The, the, the problem is going, I mean, he's the biggest guy on the poster. Yeah, he is. He, the poster looks incredible, by the way, with Nelson with the, with the back turn, like it's a, a Fast and the Furious movie. Is, is this one going to be sponsored by Fast and the Furious again? Uh, Trace thinks it's going to be sponsored by Top Gun, which when you see the picture of Nelson with the, the aviator chase, it's probably a pretty good take. All right. So so you'd go Nelson over Corey. I think you've sold me on that. Can I put Nelson in? I'm running out of money quick, pal. Yeah, Paul got on me for having the pricing too cheap last season. So I tried to bring it up this season. Uh, let's see. Was there a COVID outbreak? I feel like I saw like a U.S. Oh, weekly, yeah. US weekly headline about this. So there was like a couple of days into filming, there was a pretty significant COVID outbreak and that shifted around a lot of the cast. So a lot of people went out, more people came in and we had assumed based on this, like we, we thought that they, okay, we'll just restart the season at that point, but we're not sure that that's true based on some of the stuff in the trailer has been shot. So the, the, we don't know how that'll be portrayed within the show, but there was a COVID outbreak that, may also cause the season to be sped up at certain points if their scheduling is a bit off. Interesting. All right. So remind me again, are there any special bonus points for telling the camera and telling other people that you're doing this for your family? <laughs> no, uh, I okay. think that would make me have to price Corey at like 350 then, right? Yeah, so so I'll pass on Corey. Corey's my guy, though. Ever since, what was it, Real World, the one that was in San Francisco, it had like it was the first gimmick season, the one that uh, Jenna came uh, from. Explosion. Explosion, which is a season that I like. Ashley Mitchell came from that one, too. I can't believe Corey and Ashley are still friends, like I have become friends after that season. Ashley was out of her mind on that season. She was fit, reality TV gold, but I've just always been rooting for Corey. I do like Nelson, though, and it's weird that he gets so many of these, like, there's some horrible Nelson moments over the years where like, he just seems like such a terrible person, but it also just seems like he's kind of a dummy and doesn't understand. And then once it's explained to him, he becomes a better person after it. So oh, maybe this is a nice redemption arc for him. I, I just think he wears his hearts on his sleeve. Like, I just think he's very genuine. He's definitely, he's more like, he's like with Hunter where just whatever Nelson's thinking is what, what's happened. Now Nelson's not like trying to put up for the camera at all um he's one of the best quotes in the history of the show unintentionally so i i I think i i think he's a he seems like it seems like most people like nelson like it doesn't seem like most people really have a disliking towards nelson no that's true so devin and josh are 150 a piece they're the cheapest of the returning guys like i said i think i'm gonna go with josh crying points just that's a lot of points it is a lot of points and there's gonna be a lot of crying there will be a lot of crying uh, from Josh. I mean, I'm curious as to who is, if it's not Devin, who do you think his rival is going to be this season? 
Oh, he'll. There's a cast, a new cast of twenty people. Could be all of them. <laughs> he he did, if they do go back to the rivals format, he's not going to be somebody who's going to be hurting uh, for options. No, and and Wes is just praying that it's not going to be him. Although I will say, when I watched the trailer, Devin and Josh seem like they're in better shape. I mean, they could be in better shape, and there's still a ways for them to go to reach the rest of these people. Like they're not, they're not nom yet. And then, uh, I mean, compared to the rest of these guys, I know the rookies are a bit of a question mark, but most of the rookies do seem like they'll be pretty good competitors too. I, I don't see who in a physical competition they really have a shot against besides each other. Uh, I feel like Josh isn't horrible at the daily missions. Like he's not like when you talk about pattern recognition, I don't think Josh is like super smart, but it feels like he has that part of the game down a little bit better than a lot of even some of like the smarter, better puzzle type people. Josh is able to pick up on patterns a little bit easier. At least that's what I've noticed from these days. It's not like he's winning them, but he's also not like trash at them at the same time. I think a lot of that is these past couple seasons, we've had all these missions where people haven't like tried. And then Josh does just tries every time because he's Josh. And well, the, but the, that's also a part of it too. Cause I've seen him paired with like some pretty bad partners over time. And he is like a guy who legit is going a hundred percent at all times. Now his hundred percent is like someone else's 60%, but he's not someone who's going to throw in the towel at the same time. And, and sometimes in these partner seasons that just keeps moving you down the list. Like you're not going in, you're not going to be the best guy in the game, but it gets you really deep. Yeah. And I'm sure the rookie, like people do seem to think he's a decent partner. Like he's not somebody who's like Zach, who's going to be screaming at whoever his pair is. Uh, he d- is giving a full effort each time. I-, I just think there's a talent gap with him and everybody else. Like, of the guys who have, like, been on the show in the past few years and have hung around for a couple of seasons, he's probably the worst one by a decent amount. Sure. I mean, we didn't even mention Kyle. I I, I could use a Kyle win this season. He's not going to make my fantasy team, but I, I just I- – I'm trying to think about who my favorite person on the show is at this point. It might be Kyle. Like, it it was Corey, but Corey's kind of settled down. He's not hooking up every single season anymore. Kyle is just funny. Kyle's the funniest guy out there. Uh, Kyle is also about to have a kid. So I don't know if he'll be hooking up either. Oh, wow. I mean, didn't didn't they, like, edit out his hooking up one season? They did edit out his hooking up on Total Madness, where that, that whole crazy theory of what happened with that season. I think with Kyle, like... It seems like he's able to get to kind of the 75% mark on each of these seasons. Like, he hasn't had that many seasons where he's really been eliminated early. But then there's just something happens and he gets eliminated or he makes a final and kind of is a breath away from winning. I still think in a final, like, he's behind, he's well behind, like, the Nelsons and Corey. Yeah, I would think so, too. Although he seems to be in fantastic shape at this point. So maybe we see him in a final and he's a little bit different. Amanda is back, too. She's 160 bucks. That feels too cheap. What should she be? 220? 220 for Amanda? That's a lot. I, I think we don't know where she'll come in physically. She's liable. She she I think she'll be good from like a politicking perspective. She has a lot of friends on this cast, but she does also make enemies pretty easily. So look, I love Amanda. I, I'm happy she's back on. I think she's very good TV. She always is like producing storylines for it. I do also think she is somewhat of an underrated competitor too. Like I mean, her and Zach were pretty much the best team on Final Reckoning if Zach just didn't get themselves thrown in. And she's had other seasons where just from her puzzles ability and her pattern recognition, she's been able to keep up. But this is a pretty athletic female cast on the rookie side overall. So I think she could be in some trouble if she's in eliminations. Maybe, but she's good. when as long as she is on the show, she is going to be on our screens. It's almost like the Josh thing and the Devin thing where you're not really banking on Amanda to win the season. You're banking on her scoring all of the points every episode. Like when you said like Ashley, like on a per episode basis could be the highest score it could be amanda it could be amanda too there was a real passing of the torch there with their partnership in world of the world's one where amanda passes on uh the person who's in fights every episode on to josh and now now they're both back on together again well here's the issue now so i'm filling out my team as we're going along i only have 210 dollars left and i need two more people so that's going to be a bit tricky so you need to tell me about some of these rookies like who are the good rookies going to be you mentioned natasha uh, is going to be really good. She's $190. Uh, someone named Esther is $180. So are, are these two going to be good? Yeah, they're both from Big Brother Nigeria. We talked about Tasha a little bit before. Again, very, very big following. Decent athletic background. She was also pretty impressive. 
efforts across Africa, like giving people like sanitation equipment that they don't necessarily have. I don't think you get. Bonus so she's just pretty that. impressive. From I, like I a, don't. I don't think you get bonus points for that on the challenge. Being, well, no. Be, being, a but good, be, just... being a good person rarely translates to doing well on the challenge. Hopefully, like, she'll be able to talk about that, and we'll give her a few confessionals, and we'll make her a few friends on the show. But I think we're just a person of perspective. She uh, uh, impressed me a lot. And then Esther, I believe, like, I think this was Esther. She, I want to say she uh, is an attorney and finished law school, like, like, as, like, a teenager or something. Like, she's, there's a lot of people, especially on the female side of this rookie's cast, who I was very impressed by. Um, and then Esther, also a pretty big following from Big Brother Nigeria, not quite as much as Tasha. Uh, but a good athletic background, so I think she'll be very competitive coming on the show. Okay, I need I need cheap ones though. I mean, there's a reason that these people are down here, but yeah, who is Tracy Candela? Tracy Candela. Um, I I think if there's odds for first person to be out, she might uh, be my pick. She's from Love Island, Germany too. Th- there wasn't a lot there with her. I mean, she hung around the, that show for a while, but there's not much athletic background. Uh, everybody says she's a crazy person, but they say that about everybody who comes on the show. So, I'm just I'm just looking at these like little tiny thumbs that are on the site. Emmanuel Niagu looks like he's wearing a neck brace in his picture. Yeah, he looks like if somebody casted uh, like a PBS documentary casted somebody to play Jordan. <laughs> he even seems like he has a terrible haircut, like Jordan. Yeah. Oh, who's this? Who's Emmy? I don't know if he'll be quite as talented as Jordan is at the show. Is Emmy that one from uh, Romania Survivor? Yeah, she's got blue hair, Survivor Romania. She had a rap single that went pretty big on YouTube, has like three or so million listens. Okay, so maybe I should be targeting her. Yeah, she's a bit more expensive, though. She is. She's 150. I mean, I can rejig my team here. Like, if I don't take CT, I can afford whoever I want. But I know I want Josh and I want Amanda. Maybe I'll maybe I'll pass on Nelson and go down the list a little bit more. Nam is back. I just find it hard to take. Like that's gonna be a big part of this. Like, how is the fluency of a lot of these guys? Because Nam is just going to be hurt in his confessionals because he doesn't. He speaks English, and like every German person I know whose English is like their third language, he speaks it eloquently. Like when he speaks, it's like the very proper version of English that you just don't hear anyone else mm-hmm. speak. You're like, oh, wow. Like you really learned this to the letter of the law, but it's not like he's mixing it up with people in confessionals at the same time. No, and I think without Lolo, he seems like a good enough dude where he won't be like in disputes if his partner isn't a crazy person. Yeah. So give me some people down here. Tell me about them. That's why you're on the show. Uh, so Bob. we've got... Okay, well, we had we had, we were at the 190 range. Now you're asking me to dive into the hundred dollar bargain bit. Um, so yeah, Emmanuel, I I think he could be okay. I mean, he's a professional dancer, so he's got. We've seen that translate to the show pretty well. We're just just an agility and a dexterity that comes with that that will be okay. Um, Huey kind of seems like smaller British Josh. He's like from the images i've seen of him he's always in disputes with people from his show he's very explosive character he's very argumentative i just think from like an athleticism standpoint i don't see how he's competing at all with any of these other guys okay so g- give me the people i need to take then Re- renan renan uh yeah so he is from uh x on the beach double dutch so that's like the Dutch version of X on the beach. He had a pretty good competitive background. So he had a pretty impressive like YouTube basketball highlight reel that I was watching the other day. So he's got some good natural athleticism um, for that. And then coming from a dating show, it seems like he'll, he'll be down to hook up. So he could be in the mix for some points. All right. So yeah, you're, you're not helping me here in the bargain basement. I, I need, I need someone cheap. Give me someone. Well, he's cheap. also 160. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm naming names at this point. Cause I want to know who these fucking people are. Rob, figure it out. Okay. Well, I think, so from the bottom at the end, I think Emmanuel will be pretty good. I think Lauren will also be pretty good. Uh, she is from Love Island, U.S., but is actually born in Britain. Um, so she has kind of like a mix of a British and American background. And then she had like she actually like contacted TMZ and did like her own TMZ report after she left Love Island. So she seems like she's got a bit of that extra crazy person edge for a reality TV character. Um. After that, we've got uh, Berna Candlebeck, who I think will be pretty interesting. She's from one of Turbo Seasons of Survivor, um, Survivor Turkey. So, and like, if you're on any of these international seasons of Survivor, these things go for like 500 days. 
and like people are dying and yeah, there's, like, wh- no wh- water. Wh- wh- which was the which was the survivor where the guy died and they were like, let's keep going. <laughs> that was a survival Bulgaria where the guy dies, the host quits, two people quit, and then they're like, all right, let's just keep mushing on through. <laughs> no, 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 uh, just keep moving. I like this guy, Gabor Zbazo. That's just a great name. It is a very good name. He's called Gabo. Uh, He's from uh, he's from Poland. He's from Warsaw Shore 12. It's funny how you can just see like when you look at these international shows, how just like every show has a version from a different country that just has some stereotypical name from that country. Do we talk about Corey yet? Corey Lay? He has a great place. Corey Lay. Yeah, that'll be confusing. They'll need to do something where we don't mix up our Corys. Yeah, because he's from 12 dates of Christmas. All right. He's based in Seattle. He seems pretty smart. What the hell is 12 he, Dates he, of Christmas? I don't know. So it sounds like a Hallmark movie. It's it's just one of those, like, it's just whatever dating show from HBO Max. It's from HBO Max? I think it's from HBO Max. Yeah. So, so is he American? Yeah, he's American. Okay, so he's one of the American rookies. So does he get, like, the does he get to be Corey L and Corey gets to be Corey? Or do they... Does he get like the one thing I really disliked on Dirty Thirty is when they made Derek Kaczynski Derek K for some reason. It's like no, that's Derek. The new guy can be Derek Initial. Yeah, I think. I mean, they could just make him go by his last name, uh, like they did with a couple of people. But his last name is just gonna be Lay. I don't think that would work. He'll probably just be Corey L. I think Corey is Corey W in the trailer when you see Corey's outfit. So. Oh no, I don't like that at all. I don't, I don't know. If, I, mean, what, I don't why, know what else do you want them to do? Just call Corey Corey, and this guy can be Corey L. That's, just, that's confusing. It's though. not confusing. I, I we, think... we we have a pretty established relationship with the guy who's been on ten seasons. I think for him it would be confusing. I, no, I don't really give a shit about him. Is that I, anyone? I think I think he's coming from twelve. He'll probably days be out of early Hanukkah too. or something. What was that? I'm sorry. Was it what was he? Twelve days of Hanukkah. 12, 12 dates of Christmas. Not oh, okay. okay. All right. So I guess the I la- think he'll be okay. So the last, one I think be- these American rookies could really be in trouble. Yeah. Especially if like, I, I feel like I want to lean veteran here. So maybe this like little mini tier of veteran women is where I need to be at the Nani and Nisa big T tier 150, 140, 140. I might actually go with Anisa at 140 and try to like rework my team a little bit because if she does last and she is going to get hurt, like that could really be a lot of points. <laughs> It could be a lot of points. I think I prefer Nani in that range. I think she's she's always able to hang around until the last season. And maybe like making last season's final kind of reinvigorates her athletic. Like she knows she needs to step it up now to win a final. So I and like she has connections pretty much across the cast. She has that connection with Casey. Pretty much everybody outside of like CT, she has a decent dynamic with on the veteran side. So I think she'll be in a good spot. All right. So I have reworked my team now. And I have $120 left for one last person. So who's the look? This Ed Eason guy looks like he's jacked. Yeah, you would have been a lot higher priced, but he's also an alternate. You can see him clearly in the trailer, but he's not on the official cast to start. He also was like in the Carrie Underwood band for a while. He comes from the Circle US, um, which is a very weird show if you've ever seen it. But so is the circle. He, the one I, I think if he com- if he comes on, he'll, like in a good position, is he, the, he could really do well. Is the circle the one where they just like lock everyone in a room and you tweet at each other? Is it that one? <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, it's influencer. Who is the best influencer? Basically, reality competition show. All right, so Jeremiah White. He has the same. You're dressed like him right now. Am I? Uh, so Jeremiah, he is from Love Island, USA. He just seems like a chill Southern dude. Every that's what he just says about himself every single time he's on so i don't think he'll be fighting as much um but he'll probably be able to get along with people and he's in okay shape so i think i might have to take this guy from warsaw shore it's gonna be really hard to just eliminate a polish dude well he he seems like he's in really good shape too so i think of the rookie guys outside of kells uh he he seems like the one that i like the most all right, I'm going to like rework this team a thousand times. I'm going to spend more time on this than I will like actually drafting my like fantasy football teams this year to try to get the perfect lineup. But I'll, although we know you're going to win because you're spoiler Rob and you already know who wins. So I mean, I have won one time in like the six seasons that I've been doing this. So it, this is not, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, just pushing all the sand into my favor. Well, we know that you have to intentionally throw it to throw us off the scent, but we're not buying it, spoiler Rob. Now he's. Rose again. Kind of seems like a very bad gameplay on my part. 
Yeah. All right, Rob, tell everyone about the Challenge Chronicles. Yeah, if you search the Challenge Chronicles uh, on iTunes or on Spotify, uh, you'll find us there. We cover the Challenge. We do about two episodes a week, one Patreon, one public episode. So check us out on Patreon, $4 a month. Pretty cheap, and you'll get all of our content for up there. All right. Uh, I recommend it. I am a Patreon sub at the Challenge Chronicles, and one thing I enjoy doing is listening to Rob and then calling Rob and then berating Rob when he says crazy things, because that's what Rob does. Although it's all in good fun. Or is it? You can join the Challenge Fantasy League for the Pat Mayo Experience for free in the description of this video. Pass it around. Don't don't hog all of that, that link to yourself. Tell all your friends. Get in the league. It's always a lot of fun. It makes the viewing all that much more enjoyable. Maybe we'll be back with recaps this year. I highly doubt it, uh, just because I think it's going to be a time crunch for me. Maybe if I can get the episodes early. We'll see about that. Either way, smash like to the episode on the way out in the comment section. Give me your highest scoring rookie player on the cast this season and have fun with the season. Like I said, it, it debuts August 11th. The first look show is August 9th. So you know, it's right around the corner. So get in that league and tell your friends right now. Okay, I'm Pat Mayo. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Family experience! Experience!